Hey everybody, welcome back to Trial and Error. I'm super excited, I just got my first merch of the new merch delivered, so check this out. Here's my uh, 10 millimeter Gremlin, and you can see we got him holding a little 10 millimeter wrench there, and he even has a little Trial and Error logo on it, and he's standing on top of a pile of all of the wrenches the mechanics have lost over the years. So I don't know any guy that, turn, that can turn a wrench that wouldn't find that funny, um, but I've got all kinds of stuff, t-shirts, hats, hoodies, deer whistles, potted plants, all branded, you name it, it's on my Teespring site. Uh, details are in the comment section and in the details window of this video. As always, appreciate you guys watching so much. Appreciate you buying the merch, it really does help. Thank you as always, and now let's get into the video. Let me first start off by saying that this is not a sponsored ad. This is not sponsored content. I have no reason to lie about the equipment, whether it's good or bad. Uh, this is stuff I bought myself. And we are replacing my current camera system. This is the current setup. As you can see, there's a pretty good reason to upgrade it. Um, a, it's just 480i for resolution, uh, but B, uh, this interference has just been a, a new feature for us. So it started with just one or two cameras having an issue. Now pretty much yeah, all of them have some level of interference. So time to go. So all of that equipment was good when I bought it eight, nine years ago, but now is really out of date. It's 480i is the resolution. The system that we're going with is um, an IP based system. So the reason we're in the bar is because anytime I work with IP anythings, it's a matter of time before I start drinking. So we're going to learn this together and uh, we'll see how difficult it is. I, supposedly it isn't that hard to set up, but I, again, IP stuff in me, I can build a lot of things, but when it comes to IP network building, all of that stuff, I struggle. So if I can show you, if this is easy with me, then you know you can do it. So we got a few different things that uh, I think we need. Uh, one is a eight channel, it's not a DVR, it's an NVR. It's a network video recorder, which is different from a DVR. So this takes the regular Cat5 cable straight into that. It gives us eight ports and it comes with four bullet style cameras, which I like to use outside. Um, I also ordered a set of two each, so a total of four cameras. These are the turret style cameras, which I like to use indoors, but you can also use them. These are indoor and outdoor rated as well. So we'll have a total of, of eight cameras going into this network receiver. I also picked up this. This is a, a six port ethernet switch, but it also is PoE. So that is power over ethernet, I believe is what it stands for. So this will not only um, allow us to connect additional cameras in two of these, at least two, probably three, are gonna end up out in the garage. So totally disconnected from the main system. But because I have a wireless receiving router, or wireless router out there, it's the Google Home. Um, because I have that out there, I believe I'm gonna be able to plug this guy in, which will energize, you know, send power to these additional cameras in a totally remote area, and then communicate back to the main NVR system that's in the house and allow me to see cameras in both places. Because right now I have a separate DVR, I've got a four channel system out in the garage and a separate eight channel, yeah, eight channel in the house. So to view them, I have to go through two different apps and it's kind of a pain. This setup, because it's all internet based uh, or IP based, I should be able to combine all of it into one even though it's in two completely different sites and that was a real advantage to, to go in this way. I picked up a couple of different length uh, network cables as well because th this system comes with, I think, an 18 meter cable for each of the four cameras, but I've got some 100 footers, 50 footers, and some shorter cables as well for these guys that did not come with them. So that's kind of the overview of the equipment. Let's unbox this stuff and see what we got. All right, so this looks like these are our cameras network cables let's check these guys out Ooh, wow oh what a nice finish yeah these are wow very nice extremely solid 
Nice mounts. So it looks like we got some drilling templates. Scare the bad guys away stickers. I don't know if I would have gone with baby blue, but not the most intimidating color choice. This guy is nice and small. Oh, it's got one of those snack packs. These are delicious. So they send you an HDMI cable as well. Add that to the pile of HDMI cables I've already got. We're gonna open up one of these dome ones just to just to get a look at it. I was surprised at the pricing on these two. Very, very reasonable price. Uh, obviously, all of this stuff is gonna be linked in the description. So what we're gonna do is bench test this, uh, get it set up here on the table, get it plugged in with the network here, and hopefully get everything up and running and make sure that I can figure it out, A, B, that it works before we go through the trouble of installing it. So I, I highly recommend doing it this way because troubleshooting it when it's all right in one place, very easy. Troubleshooting it after you've run 100 foot cables throughout your house um, involves a lot of running up and down. So take a look at this switch. So this network switch, this is not something that you all will need. This is only if you're planning to do what I'm doing, which is separate your DVR from, or NVR, from some of the cameras in your system. This is gonna allow me to inject power into the uh, ethernet cables here and power those cameras, and then also plug this right into one of my Google Home, uh, Google Home networking things, wireless network uh, hubs. So you do not need this if you're planning to run all your cameras right to your net MVR not needed and I actually I've got so much stuff in the garage now so it's nice just to have a few more ports out there um, anyway so this is gonna solve a couple of problems for us so I set the password up skipped over that screen for you guys no offense and we gotta select our time zone Eastern you want month day year yes 24 hour format is fine Device name is NVR. Next. This has a two terabyte hard drive, so I assume we're gonna initialize that. Okay. So then I guess next. Network info. I don't know if any of that's right, so we'll <laughs> just hit next. And it looks like it's picked up my cameras. We're gonna leave that like that. Email configuration, we're gonna come back and do all of that stuff later. Uh, okay. All right, so we're coming out of this Google Home, which is part of my, my main network, but it's not wired to anything in the house. This is totally separate. And we're going into that new switch, which is plugged into the wall, so that's I hopefully powering up the camera which is here and then this other line is going in takes care of the Sonos and then this is the network habitat that runs all of the home automation outside in the garage so now we're gonna see if this works I have no idea and my guess is it's gonna need a ton of setup but let's just see what happens I, <laughs> I have no idea I have no idea how it did this but I come walking back in the house and check this out are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It literally figured it out and found that camera and has added it to the next channel that was available. I've never done anything with networking that actually worked that easily. It, it just friggin' works. And it looks phenomenal. I mean, crystal clear. I don't know if that's coming across in the video, but let me zoom in so you can kind of see. I mean, that is a damn good looking picture. So, yeah. I am absolutely happier than a midget in a mini skirt convention. So as you can see, we're in the basement now. One thing I noticed on a lot of these CCTV installs is people's placement of their CCTV DVRs. Don't put it somewhere that's easy to find. Um, don't stick it in even just in a closet or something if somebody's robbing your house and you don't have that networked and backed up on a cloud somewhere all they have to do is take your DVR with them and you get nothing so I'm gonna show you my my secret hiding spot here for the last eight years 
My uh, current DVR is tucked up here in a ceiling tile. The, the average smash and grab type of criminal isn't going to spend time looking for the, the DVRs. They'll see the cameras, but if they can't see the DVR easily, they're just going to get in and out as fast as they can. So always hide your DVR. Um, with that said, I'm not going to show you where my new DVR is going. I can tell you it's not going in the ceiling down here. Uh, but I do have another even better hiding spot, I think, for it. So that's where it's going to go. One of the reasons I wanted to upgrade this camera system was to get something a little bit sharper. Um, because where our dog goes out, she, well, first of all, she's a small dog. And we have big animals. We've got acres and acres of woods behind us. So we like to keep an eye on her. And unfortunately, where she goes is really hard to see from the house. So I thought, well, we'll get some higher def cameras. Set them up in the garage aiming at the house. We can actually see what's going on. So, enter the live view. Um, I wanted to be able to see that at a quick at a glance, so I picked this guy up on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. It's a 10 inch high def monitor with HDMI. It's actually really, it's all steel too. It's very, very heavily built, but it gives you everything you need there. Extremely sharp picture. I did paint it black. The bezel was white, they come white. And this is my tablet, which obviously is off the wall right now. I moved it down, but this is the tablet for the home automation. We'll have this above it. That'll show us a live view of the dog taking a crap. Cool, huh? Um, but I'll also have my other cameras on there too. It'll give you a quick glance, so not a bad thing. Um, but for the price, I think this is a great solution. So let's get it going. Yep, that's a stud. Nope, that's another stud. <laughs> oh, this is gonna suck. I knew there was one. I was really hoping there was only one. So the TV uh, recesses in the wall deeper than the drywall does, or deeper than the drywall is thick. So that means we're gonna have to notch the studs behind it a little bit. Now, why is nothing ever easy? Just once. Just once I want to do a project and just have it all go smooth. in so obviously I don't have all my cameras mounted up yet but the important one is here which is this larger section and you can break the screen up into whatever you know pieces you want if you want them all evenly spaced and sized or you want to do a full screen or whatever but this is the camera that shows where our dog is gonna go so we can see you know whether she jumps to the backyard or comes down the staircase we'll be able to see that and especially in the winter it'll be so nice not to have to go out there and watch her in the cold you can watch it right from here. So that's perfect. Love the way it looks tied in with the automation panel that was already on the wall here. And um, I was gonna put this on the automation panel, but I decided against that uh, just because of the amount of real estate we would have wasted. I really did need the two screens. So this just made more sense uh, to, to do it on a separate panel. And, and I like having all the cameras uh, that will be available to see at once too, so really digging that setup that's cool so the only other thing i want to show you is the app itself just so you can get an idea how easy it is to use um, it's very intuitive and uh, we'll take a look at that right now this is the pc version of real Lake's software program and they have a mac version there's an android for your phone app there is an iphone app so basically any piece of technology with a screen on it you're able to view uh, and view things remotely as well so i just want to give you an overview of what this looks like what we're on right now is the live view so you can obviously blow up any one of these in fact you can go completely full screen um, 
like so, and you can see just how sharp that is. So uh, from here, um, we can obviously move around and, and, and change out your camera views. You can select, uh, you know, how many camera views you want to see in one shot here, and there's different layouts. You can quickly and easily swap them to move them around. Uh, you know, depending on what size you, you want for that particular screen. So very easy here to utilize. Um, obviously, I still have some work to do here in programming or hooking up those remaining channels. But uh, one thing I definitely want to call attention to is the night vision. Um, so this is the garage and there's a little bit of natural light still coming in through the windows. But by and large, it is pretty darn dark in there right now as indicated by the fact that it's in grayscale because it's uh, using its night vision infrared so it does a really nice job I mean we're looking at that that's a 70 foot deep garage and it's very well evenly lit with infrared no real hot spots it's just very impressive over to the playback menu now um, so this is how you'll review your footage so we'll click the timeline down there and that brings this up so you got a calendar that you pick the dates that you want to view and then you can move through the days there by hour anywhere you see the blue lines there is where we have motion recorded you can pick any of the channels and add that so you can view multiple channels at the same time as well um, and this is probably the only thing I wish was a little bit bigger I wish that timeline that we could stretch it out um, but as you see it, it's it works very well so um, you can also adjust the uh, quality of these recordings it is not right now recording at its highest capacity it's actually right about in the middle there so we can go up to five megapixel um, high-def recordings and uh, well, there's my wife sitting on the couch and uh, it does a, a very nice job there and very very intuitive now if we mouse up to the settings for each additional or each individual camera you've got a whole slew of different options from obviously the name but where the name's located the time and the date stamping and where that's located so it's not in the way you can mask off certain parts for motion under advanced you've got some really nice controls over each individual camera's uh, brightness contrast um, hue and sharpness and all of those toys the dynamic range is fantastic the control so that you know areas where you've got the sun beating in on that room right now and then on the right hand side of the screen it is essentially dark and you still have good levels of details even in those darker areas it just kind of speaks to the good quality cctv camera the the sensor itself does a really really nice job with all these wacky lighting situations that you typically run into with cctv so that pretty much hits all of the key points of the system. I am very pleased with my purchase here. Very impressed, excellent upgrade for me. Super easy setup, which is 90% of the battle with a CCTV system, but camera quality is top notch DVR, easy to use. You know, it just kind of ticks all the boxes here. So if you're potentially in the market for a system, I mean, you can do something as simple as just a little four camera system like this, uh, all the way up to, you know, 64 channels, go nuts with it but really nice peace of mind thing to have uh, at your house for sure and I don't think um, you get a better system for the money than than this one here so obviously if you have any questions comments concerns and or criticisms make sure you throw them down in the comment section below me I want to thank you all for watching as always and have a great day Bye.